Why do we need neckties? I don't wear them. They're terrible. They hurt your neck. They're, you know, let's start a campaign. Let's see if we can, as a society, eliminate the necktie. Why not? I bet we could. Using knowledge of physics to perform in sports, to do something. Learn using what we learn about persuasion to persuade real people, like our parents, like companies, to do something. Learning what we learn in science, using what we learn in science to predict when our infrastructure will fail. What needs to work? What can we do? In the States, we have bridges collapse. Boom! Cars are on them. They're driving a car. Boom! We could have our students be learning to figure that out in advance. That's real education. And in another sense, our kids already have transformed education. How has that happened? They've learned that when they want to learn about something, they can teach themselves. They can go online. Kid I know wanted to have a pet lizard. He went online and wrote a paper about why that was good, gave it to his parents. But they need our guidance. Now, of course, this was always true. What do all these people have in common? You've heard of some of them. They're all self-taught. You could teach yourself. Some people like John Dewey and other educators thought that was the best way to learn. But we lacked resources to do it in the past. So you had to be a very special person to find that old encyclopedia in the books and spend time in the library and do that. But today, everything a kid needs to learn anything I guarantee you anything, well, the whole medical curriculum is online, that's already on the web. Everything's there. It may not be the best, but it's getting better daily. So why don't we have all our kids learning everything by themselves? Because they're not motivated to do it. If they were, if a kid is motivated, you can't stop them from learning. So that's really, I think, our job as educators. And what's happening is the kid's education is splitting into the unmotivated part and the motivated part. What do we call the unmotivated part often? School. What do we call the motivated part? I call it broadly after school. It's the internet. It's what people, uh, it's robotics clubs. It's what they do. School, we give them the credentials. Great. Those are becoming less and less important, by the way. After school, though, it's what the kids want. It's exciting. They pull it. We don't have to push it on them. There are lots of smart people who are questioning whether we need schools. We're going to hear from one of the authors of this book later today, Disrupting Class. They're saying technology will do it. It's a better, cheaper technology. It's disruptive. It'll change education. Well, maybe in the long run it will. But in the short run, I don't think it will because the kids aren't motivated. Now, I'm not talking about those kids at the top, remember. They're very motivated. And for them, it'll be a great boon right away. But for the kids in the middle, the kids who are dropping out, the kids who really have trouble, whom we really want to reach, we're having trouble. We can't create online stuff that's motivating enough for them fast enough. So school's job, as I see it, is to motivate the kids. That's why we need the teachers. That's why they're not going to lose their jobs, as many of them are scared to death about. Their job is to turn on the lights. Are our kids attention deficit disorder? A lot of people think so, right? They're giving them Ritalin and other drugs. Here's what the kids say. It's not attention deficit. I'm just not listening. My friend, the teacher, says they're EOE. Engage me or enrage me. And they're not engaged. They're enraged. They climb the walls. They act out. We think something's wrong. But the only thing that's wrong is we haven't engaged them. So how do we do it? How do we turn on the lights for these kids? My sense is the most important way is through their passion. And I think with all the bad press that our kids are getting, we ought to see them in a new way. I offer a new metaphor. I'm going to say our students are rockets. What does that mean? Well, they go fast. They're headed to places unknown. They're highly volatile. 
They can't be controlled precisely, just like physical rockets. They need good programming, the right fuel, and a good payload, and they may require some mid-course corrections along the way, just like physical rockets. But they have an enormous potential payoff. Every kid has that, and that's what we have to figure out. Now, what I like most about this metaphor is that if the students are rockets, what does that make educators? Rocket scientists. Who knew? So the next time somebody tells you that education is not rocket science, you say, yeah, it's harder. Because physical rockets obey the laws of physics. We don't know what laws kids obey sometimes. But we can ask, if we believe that metaphor, what fuel best motivates today's kids to learn? And that is really clear. That's their passion. That's their passion. And if you ask kids what their passion is, you'll find it's all over the place. You'll find some of them like sports and music, some of them like the environment, history, writing. Great widespread. And that's where their learning should come from. Because that's the basis of all good learning that lasts. Passion, not external discipline. When you learn through your passion, it lasts your whole lifetime. So we're starting to hear about passion-based learning. And I think that's where education needs to go. To teach these students, we need to put people in passion before the classes and the content. And that's not to say that classes and content aren't important. They are. But if we're not talking about people and relationships and understanding and knowing each other, we're not going to have education that matters. As one teacher used to say, I used to teach my subject, but now I teach my students. And that's where we need to go. To teach your students, you need to know their interests and their passions. Do teachers know that? If you ask them, they'll tell you not enough. They don't know it. What percent of teachers? It's probably under 20%. The teachers will tell you that. They just don't know. They don't have time. I have hundreds of kids, whatever the reason. They don't ask. What percentage of kids think their teachers know their passions? Almost none of them. But the most important thing is what percentage of students want their teachers to know their passions? And the answer there is almost 